What is this? <laughs> is this a fan made guitar or just another guitar in the shape of an explorer made by a guitar tech? Nah, this cannot be made by a popular brand, can it? What's this? Edwards? Hmm, this rings a bell. Weren't they a part of the ESP guitar company? But nah, with this headstock, it's not possible, is it? Made in Japan? Really? I'm just messing around. Of course, it's an Edwards made by ESP in the ESP factory, but you will be surprised which one. It is not labeled as an ESP because Gibson can start a lawsuit against them for the Explorer shape. These are meant and produced for the Japanese market only. These Explorers are extremely overlooked by a lot of people, but basically you're getting ESP standard quality for dirt cheap compared to the crazy prices of the ESP Explorers. It may look a bit plain in this color, but trust me, in person, it's a great looking guitar. High-end specs as well, two-piece mahogany body, solid mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard. 22 extra jumbo frets, Goto made in Japan tuners, Goto bridge and tail piece. The controls are master volume, master tone, three-way switch, and you have Seymour Duncan blackouts. All of those specs we're used to seeing on expensive ESP guitars. Active electronics with the 9 volt battery under the cover. Why are these guitars so overlooked? Well, because they're meant for the Japanese market and not a lot of people seem to know about them. Also, there seems to be a bit of a confusion who makes them and where exactly. Here I was, naively thinking that this was gonna be a quick video about a cool explorer copy. Then I found this deep rabbit hole about the origins of the Edwards that I decided to follow. But George, there's a sticker that says made in Japan on the back of the headstock. What is there to figure out? If it says that it's made in Japan, then it's made in Japan. Or is it? Why don't you guys join me on a magical ride, not only through space, but time as well. We're gonna try to figure out the origin of the Edwards that I have today for a review. And this question has been asked on some specialized forums throughout the years. Interesting threads like Vintage Japan Guitars 1 and My Les Paul forum by Gibby Phone. Check them out. Thank you guys for the wonderful information and let's follow the thread of Frankie Benedetti for now. It reads the following. At a certain time a doubt about the origin of Edward guitars appeared and was very discussed on the specialized forums. Were these guitars actually made in Japan or in a joint venture located in Korea, Vietnam or China? In April of 2009 ESP responded by email to a Tokai forum member about the origin of Edward's guitar production. Here is the original response in Japanese, but we are gonna check out the translation. It translates to Edwards performs woodworking and painting at our Chinese factory, not a subcontractor, and performs assembly and setup at the new Tokyo factory. Remember I promised you to take you back in time as well? We are gonna do so by checking out the history of the ESP group and we are gonna go all the way back to 1992 in March when they established the ESP China in Jixi, Providence, China. So far it's officially confirmed that ESP have their own Chinese factory. Back to the thread, ESP established a joint venture in northeastern China in early 92 called Heilong Yang ESP Electronics Audio Co. Limited. Please excuse my Chinese names reading. ESP set up a business at the time thanks to the opening of the economic sub-region in Northeast China. In short, it was an agreement between China, Russia, Japan and Korea to reduce restrictions and cost on the import and export of finished but mostly unfinished products between these countries. ESP saw the opportunity to have a cheap and well-trained workforce as well as factories with a lot of workspace for cheap. This was good for the Chinese workers that were out of jobs in the mining sectors as well. ESP shipped the raw materials by sea to Vladivostok, Russia. Now, let me try to visualize the flow of goods for you. Here is a huge chunk of the world. This is Russia, look how big it is. And don't tell me I'm Russian, look, here is Bulgaria and here is Russia. Look how much bigger they are and look how small my country is. Anyway, here is Japan, here is China and we have a small chunk of Russia between them as well. Here is the Japanese ESP factory in Saitama sending rough wood materials by sea to Vladivostok, Russia. 
It's either the ports of Vladivostok or the one in Nahotka, any of those. From Vladivostok or Nahotka, the materials travel by land. It is believed they travel by train to this region on the border of Russia and China, Sino-Russian commercial zone. Then they still have a couple of hours to travel by road to Jixi, where the factory of ESP is located. The first official address of the Jixi factory was on Hishan Road number 72. God, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The factory was located there all the way to 2009 when they changed locations to the nearby Dokshan Lu Dokshan Road number 92 with a new facility. The finished product gets back to the Chinese border, back to Vladivostok, then by sea, back to Tokyo Saitama's factory. I hope you got the idea. You got the rough materials sent from Japan to Vladivostok, then by land to the border, then to Jixi when they're processed woodwork and paint, which is done in the ESP factory, another subcontractor, then back to the border, back to Vladivostok and back to Japan for final assembly, putting on the electronics, the hardware and the QC. Presumably, but very plausible in my opinion. Some claim that Edward's guitars were produced back in Japan in 2010 and 11, but I sincerely doubt that. It is believed that initially all Edward's guitars were made in Japan, but at some point they were moved to China. The email that started this whole thread dates back to 2009, but the factory was founded in 92, so we cannot really tell. With no absolute solid evidence, I can only give you my perspective of things. For some people, China is considered to be a bad word. But keep in mind that this is not a subcontractor, it's an ESP factory situated in China. As you've seen in the ESP history page, this factory was established all the way back in 92. This means they had a lot of time to train their own employees. Now, if ESP are shipping materials from Japan and then processing them in their own facility in China with trained personnel with everything, I don't really mind that. Final assembly and QC is conducted in their Saitama factory in Tokyo. And honestly, this feels like a Japanese made guitar. It's nowhere near the China quality that we're used to. I have a couple of questions though and if somebody has the answers please feel free to comment. First of all, I know these are meant for the Japanese market, but how are they not getting sued by Gibson for the V Explorer and Les Paul shapes? My second question has something to do with recent developments. Here is some recent information from Patrick Schaefers in the Edwards Guitar community in Facebook. It's a communication between him and ESP Japan. Thank you for this valuable info Patrick. You can see that on August 11th, 2022, they answered that regular Edwards are processed in some ESP China factories, it's a technically excellent factory, etc, etc. So, so in 2021, the ED serial numbers were still produced in China. Nowadays, because of the war in Ukraine, Russia is getting bans for export and import of goods from all over the world, including Japan. As you can see, some musical instruments were banned as well. Last year, the 125 and 120D were discontinued. I wonder how will all this affect the ESP's Chinese factory? Are these explorers gonna be produced in Japan again? I guess time will tell. For now, let's focus on the 125D that I have for a review today. Regardless where it was made, it's an amazing guitar and I'm gonna show you why. Let's go over the specs once again. We have two-piece mahogany body, solid mahogany neck with a set neck construction, rosewood fingerboard and 22 extra jumbo frets. We have the banana shaped Gibson style headstock with Goto tuners made in Japan, Goto bridge and tailpiece non-locking, the famous Seymour Duncan active blackout pickups and the control scheme is master volume, master tone and the three-way selector. I absolutely love the simplicity, I don't need anything else from this guitar. Pickups out of the way, they're easy to remove, they're with the quick connect system for the blackouts And something interesting that I noticed about the neck cavity is look at the way it's routed. It's like it has been CNC routed like this. But there's an additional piece of wood that is covering the set neck construction. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it from here and it ends here. They glued it to the set neck and then sanded it down to make it look like it has been cut like this. Very neat. Changing the angle reveals the routing 
for the cables of the quick connect system and here you can see the connection of the two piece mahogany body the line runs all the way to the back it's interesting i don't see the cables of the neck pickup going through the bridge cavity i only see the quick connect system for the bridge i must admit that i'm impressed by the routing job of the chinese factory they did it pretty neat the pickups of course are Seymour Duncan blackouts this one was made in 2012 June 28 AHB stands for active humbucker blackout N for neck designed by Kevin Beller one of the lead engineers at Seymour Duncan you can check him out on their website obviously he did a great job because the blackouts are just as famous as the EMG active pickups classic black cap same as the EMG that's it for the neck pickup for the bridge pickup I've noticed an interesting detail, my friend picks so hard on those Metallica riffs on the 5th and 6th string, so he dented the pickup where the strings are in contact with it. I didn't realize you could actually do that. This one was made in 2012 as well, but a couple of days later on the 2nd of July. Now the next thing that I'm gonna mention, I advise that you look it up on the internet because I need the entire length of the video just to talk about the hybrid differential preamplifier. Basically. It's a technology that cancels hum at great levels. And obviously you need that with active pickups. Here's a look of the blackouts with the quick connect plugs quickly connected. <laughs> Flat slanted black pickup rings and the situation with the screws is a bit weird. The ones for the front pickup are a bit shorter than the rear. I didn't expect to get a reading but the bridge blackout shows 20.8k ohms. Switching to the neck blackout. 20.7 about the same and middle position is 18.8 the bridge and tailpiece are goto made in japan non-locking and you can see their exact numbers in the specs that i gave you a little earlier in the video they are metric as you can see goto japan has some wear to it because my friend has been loving and using this guitar for over 10 years now a regular old tailpiece go to Japan as well. The bridge is thumb wheel and screwdriver adjustable, I forgot to mention. The solid mahogany neck was extremely well crafted with the rosewood fingerboard on it and the dot inlays, I know they're plastic but somehow Edwards made them look like metal. It's one of those things you have to see in person to appreciate. Here's another spec that we used to see on expensive guitars, bone nut. This bone nut measures at 42.5mm or 1.67 inch. The 12 fret measures at 51.5mm or 2.02 inches. Thickness of the first fret is 20.5mm or 0.80 inch. Thickness of the 12 fret is 22mm or 0.86 inch. Fretboard radius is 12 inches and we used to see 14 on LTD guitars and 12 on ESPs, remember? The first and 12th fret neck profile is my favorite thin C. Comfy. The truss rod cavity reminds me a lot of the ESP Kisu custom iron cross that I reviewed last time. Even has the same bullet shaped truss rod cover and bone nut. On to the tricky fun part. The headstock with the goto tuners looks pretty plain and this is for a reason. There is no logo. If there was a logo for example ESP. Gibson would have sued them because ESP is sold worldwide while Edwards is sold only in Japan. Edwards were clever though, they knew people wouldn't want the Edwards logo on the headstock so they put it on the truss rod bullet shape cover, black in the front, white on the bottom and the only place that you can see the Edwards name and you can easily remove it, exchange it with a plain black one and put whichever logo you want here. Throw it out, put a black one, slap a Gibson or ESP logo, whatever. Good thinking guys, I would leave it like that though, I like it. Don't let this plain stained Nevada brown finish fool you. This is a high quality instrument. Here is the seam line for the two piece mahogany body and the electronics compartment which looks like this when you remove the cover. The 9 volt battery is wrapped in this foam. You remove this piece of foam which is placed here so the battery doesn't short with any of the potentiometers. These cavities usually show me the level of craftsmanship that has been put into the guitar. This one can easily fool me that it was made in Japan, it's exquisite. 
three-way switch and solder on pots even though this guitar has the quick connect system back in 2012 even EMG were not using the quick connect for the pots. Tone with a small capacitor and the routing for the output jack. The output jack itself has a chrome washer and a black rectangular plate. I'm not sure if those are the original strap buttons, I think those are shutters replaced by my friend, but look at the placement, it's not here like most of the explorers. The cover for the electronics fits perfectly, but remember, those are fitted in Japan, not in the China facility. First time I saw this guitar, the back of the neck surprised me, I wasn't expecting a solid one piece mahogany neck and I don't see a seam line, it looks like one big chunk of mahogany. It has a comfortable volute near the headstock, which is always welcome for me. We have the black 6 inline Goto tuners and the Made in Japan sticker, which I would remove if this was my guitar ED serial number 2012. We already established where those are made. And here you can see one additional piece of wood, so you can achieve the shape of the headstock. If you had to cut this from a solid piece, you had to use twice the amount of the mahogany wood. So that's why they're using this additional piece. My friend plays in a Metallica tribute band and I'm gonna set this guitar in E flat standard with 1046 Dunlops. Feels like a feather and weighs like one at 3043 grams or 6.70 pounds. <laughs> This thing man, honestly if I didn't know that it was made in the Chinese ESP factory and assembled in Japan, I would never guessed it. This feels like an old Japanese made guitar, feels on par with the snake bites, the SS serial snake bites. And get this, my friend who plays in the Metallica tribute band owns both snake bites, the black and the white SS serial numbers and he prefers his Edwards, he always wants to play on the Edwards. 
I also owned a guitar like this a few years back, but it had passive pickups. I think it had the bare knuckle aftermaths. I didn't quite like it at the time, but maybe I wasn't ready to, to appreciate it. Now that I have already disassembled some explorers from Gibson, Epiphone, ESP and Hammer guitars, I can fully appreciate the craftsmanship that went into producing these Edwards. And I strongly recommend if you can get one, buy it. It's an absolute steal for the money. These are one of the most underrated guitars on the market today. Thank you guys for watching, like and subscribe.